Headlines, <laughs> Women in Defense. In honor of Women's History Month, we take a look at women's role in national security throughout history and in today's world. Most people don't know, but women have been in war disguised as men as far back as the Revolutionary War. And it shows the role of women fighting side by side their male counterparts throughout history. And when they weren't fighting with the males, they were there as the Army Nurse Corps um, helping them in the battlefield. So women have been on the front lines for a, a lot longer than people um, are care to admit. The history of women in the military is highlighted by pioneers, such as Deborah Sampson, one of the only women to fight in the Revolutionary War. She did so disguised as a man. Other women of note include the first female brigadier general in the Army, Anna Mae Hayes, the first female rear admiral in the Navy, Aline Dirk, and the first female secretary of any military branch, Sheila Widnall, who served as Secretary of the Air Force in the 1990s. This covert and overt battlefield service, as well as female representation in the defense contracting industry, is what led several women to form Women in Defense. Trisha Ward is the organization's president. Women in Defense really started out 1979. It really was the brainchild of about seven really dynamic women. And, you know, these women got together and just said, you know, it, it really would be of benefit, mutual benefit to everyone, not only the industry, to defense writ large. It really would be of benefit for us to form our own uh, organization. We didn't even have a name at that point. Um, since then, it really has grown over the past 27 years. The group held its annual Women's History Month event, giving the service to the flag award to Carolyn Beecraft, former assistant secretary of the Navy. Also in attendance was Brigadier General Wilma Vaught, another highly decorated servicewoman. As I stood with General Vaught um, to my left and the Honorable Carolyn Beecraft to my right, and hearing the stories that they talked about, um, Carolyn had said that when she was pregnant with her first child, she was asked to leave the Army. But that's the way it was in her day. I thanked them both sincerely for paving the way for me specifically. I've had four children on active duty. Trisha Ward has done it all. The now retired Naval Senior Chief Ward works in support of the military with Booz Allen Hamilton. She says people don't realize gender is not the issue inside military and defense fields. Both the men and women are focused on the job. Now that I have a perspective from both sides, I think the difference is, is what people from the outside make it such a huge difference. When you're in the Navy and you are standing shoulder to shoulder with your male counterparts, you don't know there is a difference. I really didn't know there was a difference till I got out and heard everyone talk about how different it was. Um, so I think it's really the outside looking in. And even now, Ward sees women as an integral part of the mission for national security. And the interesting thing is that when, in many of the cultures um, in the Middle East, um, men aren't allowed to talk to the women villagers. So our soldiers would go in and try and get intel from friendly villagers, and they really couldn't. They weren't allowed to go into the kitchen because that was considered where the women were, and they certainly couldn't go into the bedrooms, and they weren't allowed to talk to the children. Where if you have women there with you, they certainly can. It's very, um, it's very appropriate for our female Marines to um, go in and, and talk to them. So we were able to get lots of um, advantageous information to help us um, get a handle on what was going on in those areas and help. And with a record number of women entering the military and more women joining national security fields, women in defense will continue to grow. We're currently over 4,000 members, and that spans from the New England shoreline. It goes all the way down to what we now call the Space Coast, which is the Gulf Coast of Florida. It also goes from D.C. all the way out to L.A. Our mission really is to cultivate and provide professional opportunities and cultivate and apply networking for women across all defense industries, um, primarily um, in national security because we're a national security organization. I am just blown away, Genevieve, by the contrast between how much progress mm -hmm. women are making in defense contracting industries, running major companies, lots of them, 
Um, but then you hear about this documentary that's out, The Invisible War, how women at the bottom of the lower ranks are getting raped by their commanding officers. Uh, how is Make sense of that for me, please. <laughs> well, I, I think I don't think many people realize how many women are involved in our military and defense industry, if you will, whether both be in the services themselves or actually the defense industry and, con and contractors. Look, I, 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 the documentary you, that you mentioned, I haven't actually seen it, but there are, have been some terrible things that have happened. There's no doubt about that. But I think we have to be very careful that we don't let that paint the entire military or defense industry as anti-woman, because it is not. And the military and defense contractors, just like the workplace and just like uh, children eating moms and dads, it's better off that the defense industry has men and women in it. But in, isn't it interesting that, at least on the surface, Eleanor, it seems like women have, def have advanced much more quickly yes. in defense contracting companies than in the military itself. And, and let me say just how remarkable it is. This is an industry where to be hired in one of those CEO jobs, you used to have to be a general, a retired general admiral. Here are these women, most of whom have never been in the service, they're just very smart. How did very smart women in this industry get to move up faster than in many other industries? I think it may go back to our last segment which was about boys and how they're being raised. Look at what generation these women are in. These women did not spend every Saturday and Sunday watching football. But, but let me, no, let me say something as my, my <laughs> partner comes from that field, so I've been looking at this. It, it merits looking closer. These companies have done a good job in promoting their women. They have created a friendly environment for the women, and they have decided we need real talent and we cannot compromise. If it's a man or a female, we need the talent and we're going to give them the opportunity. So it's definitely worth looking closely because I think they can be a model for a lot of others. And sectors. I think you're absolutely right. You know, I also have friends in this industry. I have a friend who's a JAG, so I was asking him about this before for the show and he said that in the defense contracting industry women are more likely to move up than in the military but almost more why? likely than men to move up you know and why, and I, why though that's the you know that's and the that's, key a, question. that's a really that is well, a I very think good question the requirements are different the requirement, well, being in the military jobs are not the exact same thing as defense contracting jobs. I mean, defense contractors are more businesses, if yes. you will, whereas the military, there's it's also things that come into physical, physical strength and the like. But, and Eleanor, you said lots of them aren't, didn't work, grow up, so these to speak, not, in the Army or in the military. These are not but, but, right on the contract. Uh, but the ones we, that Trisha Ward spoke about and women in defense, most of them are former officers. They are, but they were in the service when there were very few women. Now we have large numbers of women coming in with men of this generation, boys of this generation, and they're into sex. I don't think that was the case when there were very few women and these women entered as pioneers into the armed forces. I do think it has a lot to do with the physical aspects. Last summer, the Marines uh, started opening up a lot more to women, and the women who were trying out, they weren't able to meet the physical requirements.